Hey, what's up? All right, here's another song I made prior to my life-changing experience, so I'm going to play that and go into a few things after. It's 2.30 in the morning, I'm a fan of the dark... Los Angeles, I'm a scandalous vandalist, anarchist, making sandwiches out of amateurs, and this is not the end of it. I'm coming back for the managers, every analyst on the planet can see my advantages, I mean in verse 3, I was speaking in Spanish, and I can speak in Chinese if you can handle some cannabis, my music's too Rubik's Cube, colorful and complicated, hit you like jiu-jitsu, you better get to concentrate, I'm smoking on a blunt in a Los Angeles park, it's 2.30 in the morning, I'm a fan of the dark, it seems like everyone today has a cannibal heart, well I be clenching my jaws like the mechanical shark, do you are Appreciate the fact the sky's blue just like I do I remind you my IQ will climb through your speakers just to find you Let's all be honest, it doesn't take college and Nostradamus To see the economic monsters around us See Jesus, see Judas, see Caesar, see Brutus See Jay-Z get hit while that chick gives him bruises Success can be ruthless, he knew this way before the blueprint The same world that praises up your music Can tear you down the next day saying that you're useless You can stab us in the back but you can't stop the movement Do your carpe diem We can carpe p.m. Turn it to a positive and turn it to a monster I can turn it to a profit Put some dollars in my wallet And some commas in my pocket But I'm hardest as an artist When I'm starving in the darkness And I'm fighting for my life From the hall to the carpet In the middle of the night Yeah, dog, see I'm barking And I thought that shit was tight I'ma put it on a song And tell them just what it was like If they want a dose of knowledge Tell them they can get it twice With a bark like that You ain't even got a bite Do you carpe diem, nah? We can carpe PM, nah? Then I got you freaking, nah? So we call Bay PM, yeah. Uh. So I'm going to read a few verses. First Thessalonians 5.5 5 says, For you are all children of the light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. And John 3.19 says, Light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And First Thessalonians 5.6-11 says, For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love. So putting this in context, it's interesting that this is an anthem basically about loving the night rather than the day. Like, granted, Carpe PM is one of the more clever lines that I've come up with, but out of all the things that I could have possibly said, I unconsciously said very specifically what the Bible said not to do, you know? Like, so, like, why choose that? Like, men loved darkness rather than light. And I made a song literally saying, I'm a fan of the dark. We are children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. And the hook of the song was, do you seize the day? No, we should seize the night. It says, those who are sober are sober in the day. Those who get drunk, get drunk at night. I'm smoking on a blunt in a Los Angeles park. It's 2.30 in the morning. I'm a fan of the dark. It's just interesting. So today I'm mostly going to break down Buddhism, Hinduism, and New Age philosophy. And there's a point that will kind of get developed as we go. But first, here's a clip of Marilyn Manson doing his kind of gimmick. And this type of thing is obviously very common. My fellow Americans, we will no longer be oppressed by the fascism of Christianity. (laughs) 
Okay, now take the same concept and check out this parody. In concert news, shock metal band Charles Monroe has unleashed a new firestorm of controversy. Religious groups including Buddhists, Taoists, Shintoists, Unitarians, followers of the Dalai Lama, and a smattering of Episcopalians have begun to organize protests outside of venues where Monroe will be performing their most recent release, Fat Bellied Buddha. MTTV was allowed in to see just what all the fuss is about. Despite attempts to shut down Monroe's performance by labeling his theatrics as hate crime, the anti-Buddhist superstar was up to his same old tricks before a capacity audience in Omaha Thursday night. We will no longer rob the belly of this fat jolly pig! As in other venues throughout the tour, audience enthusiasm reached a fever pitch during the now infamous Buddha smashing that precedes the band's performance of their hit song, Kurt's Not in Nirvana. We will make our own Nirvana! When later asked to defend his controversial stage show, Monroe characteristically responded, it's art and needs no defense and then extended his middle finger to a saffron-robed monk and said, here, meditate on this. So it's interesting that the first one is literally everywhere to the point where there's an entire genre death metal dedicated to it. And the second one is absurd and laughable. So if you just substitute Buddha for Jesus, it goes from absurd to common. And this is one of the themes that I want to explore here. Aleister Crowley, who I covered in a previous episode, is a magician, arguably one of the most impactful Satanists of all time, at one point revoked all of his magical powers to the one goal of getting rid of Christianity. Well, in 1918, Crowley uh, took a great magical oath, which was a serious thing for Crowley. Uh, he took an oath that he would surrender all of his magical powers that he had achieved until that date to concentrate his energy single-pointedly on the one task of uh, destroying Christianity and uh, reviving uh, paganism. And I think if you look around the world, it's pretty obvious that Crowley has been uh, a remarkable success. The paganism has made a big comeback in an organized way, neo-pagan groups, in an unorganized way, our whole society has become more pagan. I'll tell you, when I was a kid, I read Robert Anton Wilson and all this shit, and here we are, we're standing here, we're talking about this shit, and it's real. If you do these things that you're told by Alistair Crowley, if you actually do what they say, things happen. Things occur exactly as it's described, and we can all do it. So he would never revoke his magical powers to get rid of Buddhism, Hinduism, or New Age philosophy. In fact, he was a practitioner of all three and was even called the father of the New Age movement. So in his book, The Eye and the Triangle, Israel Rigardi said, Crowley became an expert at a dozen or so varieties of Hindu and Buddhist yoga. He experimented with more drugs and more frequently than anybody in the West before the neurological revolution of the 1960s. Crowley called for the synthesis of Western occultism and Eastern mysticism and a rebellion against all established authority, especially Christianity and the establishment of a new world order under the Antichrist. And this is a really important quote from Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan and author of the Satanic Bible. In the scores of books lining the shelves of New Age bookstores, there are instructions for guided meditation, creative visualizations, out-of-body experiences, getting in touch with your spirit guides, fortune-telling by cards, crystal balls, or the stars. What if Satanists reclaimed these for their own dark purposes and integrated them into rituals dedicated to the devil where they rightfully belong? New Agers have freely drawn upon all manner of satanic material, adapting it to their own hypocritical purposes, but in truth, all New Age labeling is, again, trying to play the devil's game without using his infernal name. So that's a powerful statement. The founder of the Church of Satan said New Age practices are playing the devil's game without using his infernal name. So he also said in the Satanic Bible, White magic is supposedly utilized only for good or unselfish purposes, and black magic, we are told, is used only for selfish or evil reasons. Satanism draws no such dividing line. There is no difference between white and black magic, except in the smug hypocrisy, guilt-ridden righteousness, and self-deceit of the white magician himself. And the famous occultist Doreen Valiant said, The distinction between black and white magic has no validity. 
And I mentioned this in a previous episode, but Aldous Huxley said to Timothy Leary, your role is quite simple. Become a cheerleader for evolution. These brain drugs will bring about vast changes in society. We must spread the word. The obstacle to this evolution, Timothy, is the Bible. Anton LaVey's daughter was married to a devout Satanist named Nicholas Schreck, and he's also a Buddhist teacher. So you're probably noticing a theme here, which is that Satanists practice Hinduism, Buddhism, and New Age philosophy, and they're dedicated to destroying only Christianity. Um, Anton LaVey even said that New Age is Satanism. It's just not sincere enough to call itself that. That's because Hinduism, Buddhism, and New Age philosophy is not an opposition to Satanism, but Christianity is. And this is the idea that I want to explore further. Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita, which is like the Hindu Bible, I am the Lord of destruction, the serpent of eternity, the prince of demons. He's often depicted with snakes all around him. And as the story goes, it's because he's so enlightened that he can hang out amongst demons and be unaffected. Even though I did for years, there's no way I would follow the teachings of someone who calls themselves the prince of demons and the serpent of eternity. And a lot of Hindu images depict what the Bible would refer to as demonic. Like, check this out. This is the lion god of yoga surrounded by serpents and tearing a human stomach open. And it's supposed to represent the end of religious persecution. And the Bible says, your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. And this is one of the main areas where Christianity stands apart from the other religions, because religions like Buddhism and Hinduism teach to detach and just allow evil to exist around you, because the idea is that there is no such thing as good or evil. There is no such thing as right or wrong, which is just a lie. And there is a battle of good and evil going on, whether or not you're able to engage with it or not. So it's a lie from Satan to say that there's no such thing as good or evil. And if you buy into that lie, you as a potential soldier for righteousness on the side of good are being taken out by just detaching. And this is the evilness of Buddhism. Like Jesus would come and take on this burden on himself, take on the, the sins and the punishment of humanity. What does Buddha do? He'll just sit there. And like if evil's going on and people are people are perishing and, and stuff like that, Buddha's just sitting there detached. And that's supposed to be virtuous because there's this lie that this is all an illusion and there's no such thing as right or wrong. Because the idea is that it's all non-dual. So if you're not in resistance to it, it won't be in resistance to you, which is true. If you're not in resistance to evil, it won't it doesn't have a problem with you, you know? But if you are like, let's say, on the side of Christianity, all of a sudden there's this, the kingdom of darkness, you're a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You are now an enemy of Satan. And so they have, so now it has a problem with you, right? Like that's why Aleister Crowley would revoke all of his magical powers to, to, to get rid of Christianity, but he'll practice Buddhism, Hinduism, and new age philosophies, the father of new age philosophy, because they're all synonymous with Satanism. They're all on the same team of this non-dual. There's no such thing as good or evil, which is a lie. And then there's this one philosophy of Christianity over here standing apart from that saying there is such thing as good or evil so on that point this was a fascinating revelation for me when i read psalms 135 it says the idols of the nations are silver and gold the work of human hands they have mouths but do not speak they have eyes but do not see they have ears but do not hear nor is there any breath in their mouths those who make them become like them so do all who trust in them so when i read that verse my jaw hit the floor because I used to have like Buddhist Hindu statues all around my place and I looked, acted and sounded exactly like them. I was sitting there with in meditation, with my eyes closed, earplugs in, not saying a word. Like it felt like, like the enemy had me handcuffed. Like the Bible says, if you're living in sin, if you have graven images, if you're following false gods, you are a prisoner of war. And that's exactly how it felt because looking back at it now, it's like, like, look at me right now. I'm able to speak. I'm like the Holy Spirit is enabling me to engage in the battle of ideas. And, and like I'm able to like uh, clarify ideas and, and share it with people. And, and I'm like certain people are being helped. Certain people are in ex extreme resistance to it. It's very polarizing. It's a battle. Um, but at this time when I'm sitting there just quietly with my eyes closed for hours a day, it's literally like I'm handcuffed. It's like, it's like I'm a prisoner of war. I'm just sitting there. I'm just, I'm ineffective on the battlefield. I, it's so trippy to think about. Um, Proverbs 18, two says, a fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. 
So that was written 3,000 years ago, basically about what everybody's talking about now. Just sit there and discover your, yourself. This is a quote from a Hindu sage, Nizargada Maharaj. If you want to sin, sin wholeheartedly and openly. That is not good advice. If your sin of choice is heroin, if you sin wholeheartedly and openly one time, you can die. Another thing that stuck out to me was Matthew 23.10. It says, do not be called master because one is your master, even the Christ. And this is a quote from Muji, who is a teacher that a lot of people listen to and I used to listen to. To live with your head at the master's feet is to live on top of the world. Because people used to come up to him and kiss his feet and stuff. And this is another thing in Hinduism. Human beings who are apparently enlightened will be worshipped as God, basically. And it's like you're, wor you're, you're worshipping the person, the creature rather than the creator, as the Bible says. So this is another way that you can fall into deception so the term new age started with a satanist named helena blavatsky um what she and alistair crowley are referring to when they talk about the new age or they talk about the new eon all the time they're talking about the reign of lucifer um which they think is going to be or that they thought when they were alive falsely that it was going to be like the antichrist was going to rise and it's going to be just thousands of years or the way that it is from now on it's going to be this new age of freed humanity and blah, blah, blah. The Bible says the Antichrist will rise for 42 months. So, so it's just going to be this little pathetic gap of time before he's destroyed. And she said, it is Satan who is the god of our planet and the only god. So that's who coined the term new age. And the father of the new age movement was Aleister Crowley. So we have all these religions over here, Hinduism, Buddhism, new age philosophy, which Satanists, the most influential Satanists ever, are practitioners of because they're basically all synonymous with each other. And the author of the Satanic Bible and the founder of the Church of Satan, Anton LaVey, said that New Age practices are Satanism. It's just that it's not sincere enough to call itself that or it's just simply deceived into thinking that it's not that. It's not hardcore enough to just call itself that. It's just like doing this little dance of thinking that it's virtuous. And so they're all on the same side and they're vehemently opposed to only one, which is Christianity, because that affirms that there is such thing as good or evil. And it is the one standing for righteousness. So, um, I mean, pick your side before it's too late. That's my message all the time. And I just I just encourage you so much to pray. And because all this stuff is real, there's such thing as good and evil. Like the, the idea that there is no such thing as right or wrong is a deception. And it's one that's running absolutely rampant today. You know, um, it started with these supposedly enlightened philosophers like Nietzsche and stuff. It's just like, it's just taken a foothold and everybody's saying that there's no such thing as right or wrong. It's just, that's in duality, rise above duality. Because like, here's the thing with deception. There's little drops of truth that are in it. And that's how it works. Because, yes, there, it is true that if you rise above duality and you're not in opposition to evil, that you won't receive resistance from evil. But what you're missing is that you then become an enemy of God. So you're, you're on the battlefield regardless. It's just whether or not you're listening to a deception. So I pray in the name of Jesus that, that you pick the right side before it's too late. Dear Lord, I pray that this message could water and edify believers, bring the lost to you, and expose the works of darkness rather than participate in them, all for your glory alone and not for anything else. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.